Hello there, thank you for watching this video so much and today I'm having a look at this which is a hall switch sensor module and what it does is basically it detects when a magnet goes past so then if I was to attach onto a bike tyre, a small magnet and put this next to it, it would be able to detect when the bike tyre goes past it and then it could work out the speed, it could work out speed by seeing how many times it goes past in a certain amount of time and if you knew how big the tyre was you know you could work out speed, you could work out the distance, average speed, all sorts of things and you can use it for so many different fields it's not just light stuff like that um, you could use it for speedometer of course as I've just said but loads of other things and you can pick this up from icstation.com at the very small price of £3.10 that's a very good price for something so good and just very quickly then, I'm going to say some of the features about it. It's got an onboard LM393 voltage comparator chip and hall sensing probe. It supports 5 volts and 3.3 volts voltage input, so it's, you know, it doesn't require that much. You can just power it on 3.3 if you really wanted. Uh, the onboard signal output is very effective instruction low level, and at the same time, the output signal lights out can be very, sorry, can be directly in single chip microcomputer I.O. connection. The signal detection sensitivity can adjust and the board size is 30mm by 15mm so it's really small as well. I said before that it can adjust, if you just have a look here, it's got some sort of screw. I think this is where you adjust it, you just, I'm just going to get my fingernail and do it but it's probably better if you use a screwdriver if you don't want to ruin your nails. Okay, so overall I think this is a great, great, great thing to have. If you're an electronics hobbyist, um, because if you into robotics projects and stuff like that, I think it's great to have like some sort of speedometer device that you can use that can detect magnetism and be used in so many different fields. And at the very small price of three dollars ten, I mean it's just a great thing to have if you're an electronics hobbyist and you're into robotics and all of that stuff. I mean, there's a, there's a very wide variety of things you can do with this, as well as speedometer. Um, and all you need is this, and something that's magnetic. If you take a look at the back of this as well, you can see the solder joints are all perfect. All of them are really, really good. It's got an onboard LED, which is always great to have on a module, to tell you know when it's powered up and stuff. That's also a great thing to have. And the sensor on it actually works really, really well. I've done it with one or two projects now. And whenever it's got, got a magnet coming around on a revelation, it never, ever misses one. It's always, always works every time. It's an absolutely perfect um, module for this, for this type of thing. Right, let's get into the project now. Okay, so I'm just going to say a few advantages of this and then we'll get on with the project. It's an invisible sensor, so it's non-contact. There's not, not going to be any wear and friction. It's got a very wide temperature range that it can be used at. Um, it's very high speed, whereas at high frequencies, the inductive or capacitive sensor output might distort. Um, it's immune to dust, air, water, whereas other sensors might be triggered by soft stuff like that. Um, it's capable of measuring large current and it can measure zero speed. Now a few of the disadvantages is that it may be affected by an external interfering magnetic field so it might not be might be affected by other factors. Um, it's got a large temperature drift, it's got a large offset voltage and the signal can be blocked by ferrous metal. However there's not many disadvantages to this I think it's very good. Right. Now, let's have a look at um, the wiring for the project. Okay then, so to do this you'll off. need some jumper wires, male to male or male to female, or you need a bit of both. Uh, the module I was talking about earlier, Arduino, if you wanted to, prototype shield. And you'll need some sort of display, so 7 segment LCD, 16 by 2 or if you wanted to you could use a bigger one, 20 by 4 if you really wanted to go all out on this project but I'm not going to be showing you how to do it with this definitely not I have got it 
a smartphone screen style thing. TFT LCD shield with SD card reader. So that's the type of screen that mobile phones use, it's touch screen. I paid £25 for that and I've never used it. Anyway, there's two ways of wiring it that I'm going to show you. I'm going to leave out the remote powering and the LCD for now. I'm just going to use these two. The first way of doing it, which is the easier, is just to put three female pins on the end of the male ones on the end of this module. And then, if you have a look carefully, I'll take the wires off for a second, but if you look carefully, you can actually see where it says ground, out and VCC. So the one on the far left here is ground, which is the black one. Well, there's two black ones. But yeah, you can see that. It's ground. So plug that into ground on your Arduino. Then the middle one is out, so that needs to go to a digital pin. So we'll just need to wire that to a digital pin. I'm just going to use a random one on my Arduino. I'm just going to use eight. No particular reason, just feel like it. And then finally, VCC is the last one. So for that one, you will need to just plug it into 5 volts or 3.3. I'm going to plug it into 5 though. And there we have it, that's the first way of wiring it. But if you didn't want to do that way, you wanted to make use of the prototype shield or the breadboard, just take that off, plug the prototype shield in. And if you don't know what this is, a minute, let me just get this in. If you don't know what this is, um, it's got all these pins here that go into there. Mine are a bit, some mine are a bit bent. And then we just go up to these so you can use these instead. We've got ground and five volt here, but it's also just got a little breadboard on top, which makes it incredibly simple. Then if you wanted to do that, just plug in instead. Instead of plugging in your three wires directly into these, just plug them into the breadboard, like so. And then, go from the breadboard, using male to male header pins, and plug these into the pins on here. And then, you might be thinking, what is the point in that? But it, it might be a better idea, because you can add more stuff to the project onto the breadboard as it goes along. But now I'm going with the original, which I think is the better option for this project. So, once you've done that, uh, you well, make sure your wiring's all correct and stuff. And now we're just going to have a little look at some Arduino code for this project. Right then, this little it. first uh, bit of code, um, we need to say the whole pin is on pin 8, which is the number of the whole effect pin. And then we need to create a variable for the whole state, so that is zero, a variable for reading the whole sensor status. Then in the void setup, we need to begin the serial monitor at the standard rate of communication at 9600, and we need to say that the whole pin is an input. Okay, then moving on to the next bit, um, we need to read the state of the whole effect sensor. Whole state equals digital read whole pin. We said above that the whole pin is 8, and the whole state is either going to be 1 or 0, depending on whether the sensor is giving off voltage or not. Now, if it is giving off voltage, it means that there isn't a magnet, because when you put a magnet to it, it stops giving off voltage. Okay, so um, if the whole state is 1, it's going to print the serial monitor magnet off. However, if uh, it's not 1, so that means it's going to be 0, then it's going to print magnet on. So all you need to do is upload that to the Arduino. Okay. And then, let me show it you now. When I put a magnet to it, well, when I don't put a magnet to it, it doesn't say anything. However, it says magnet off. 
However, if I put this magnet to it, like that, now that there is a magnet I've got off my bike, off the bike's speedometer. If I go to it now, I'm inside um, the code, so I didn't do print line, but it says there, uh, magnet on. Okay, if I was to take it away, it's a magnet off. The only error I made there, why it's not going on separate lines, is originally when I uploaded it, uh, I put here, you need, that definitely needs to be print line and not just print, because print will just do it one after the other instead of doing a separate line. But anyway, yeah, that is it for this little bit of, um, this little tutorial on how to use the sensor. However, I'm going to do something a bit more complicated now, and it's going to involve spinning my bike tie around with this magnet attached and working out how many revolutions it's done. So I'm just going to, the wiring will be exactly the same, but I'm just going to show you a new piece of code now.